Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys watching today's video. Guys, today we're going to be talking about the biggest A-hole co-angler I've ever fished with. Um, we've been doing the uh, sort of the series a little bit and the biggest uh, A-holes I've ever met in fishing, but we haven't done a, uh, a co-angler yet and it seems to be well received. A lot of people like hearing about some of these experiences. So I'm going to share that story with you guys today. And if I start hacking and sneezing, you'll know what's going on. We got some bad seasonal allergies going on here in Southwest Missouri, man. Everybody in the house this morning was all puffed up and sneezing. So, um, you gotta, <coughs> excuse me for that. But before we get started, guys, I want to remind you, if you haven't heard, Solarback came out with my new, uh, signature series glasses. These are the new RB3 series. They got the crystallized matte gray uh, frames on them here that helps reduce the light reflection, keeps your head cool, got great optical clarity on the lenses. These are just freaking awesome glasses, guys. And if you'd like to get you a pair, uh, you can get them right now, 30% off. And any purchase over $56, you get a $30 pair of sunglasses free. So I'll put the uh, Solarbat link in the description if you guys would like to try them out. <laughs> Much appreciated. Okay, guys, let's talk about the biggest uh, A-hole co-angler of all time. Now I have fished, you know, I've been fishing co-angler type tournaments since the, uh, the 1980s. So I've literally, I've literally fished with, you know, thousands of different co-anglers. I mean, you figure I fished for 35 years of co-angler tournaments on the FLW tier, Bassmaster Top 150, Bassmaster Top 100s, <clears throat> you know, regional circuits, fished with a ton of co-anglers. And first of all, say by and far, you know, 98% of them have been great experiences. I've had, I've met some great friends. Some, some of the best friends I've got in my life have been co-anglers that I've drawn out with and we just sort of hit it off. So it's been a really good experience, but there are those 2% out there that were not a great experience. Now, I want to tell you the story about the biggest a-hole I have ever drawn in a tournament as a co-angler. And I don't <clears throat> talk in terms of like being aggressive because here, here's the thing. It's like there, I've fished with a lot of co-anglers that are their own worst enemies as far as they're overly aggressive. And there, and there, there, there may be an innocence to that a little bit that they just don't know any better or they get excited. I get it like that, but I'm not saying that a co-angler is a bad person to fish with if they're aggressive. You know, I let them know right off the bat that that's not going to work and usually it turns out okay. But this particular guy that I fished with, <clears throat> there's something else. Um, I don't, I'm not gonna tell you the lake because I don't want, I, I want to keep some anonymity, anonymity for this guy. It was an FLW tour event, probably, man, I'm guessing this was a little over 20 years ago. And um, it was uh, towards the end of the season and a lot on the line. This was back when I was, you know, full-time fishing two circuits. I was fishing Bassmaster Top 150, FLW Tour. All of my income came directly from tournaments. So I had a lot of pressure on myself to do well. This was toward the end of the year, qualifying for the championship, all that type of stuff. And anyway, I draw this guy. The, it was the first day of the tournament for this. <clears throat> a lot on the line in this tournament. And I had a pretty good pattern going. I was you know, pretty confident I was going to do good in the tournament. And I get in the boat with this guy and I'd actually heard a little bit about him before. There, there's a, there was about, at the time, there was about five co-anglers that had the reputation that you did not want to draw on because they were very difficult to fish with. They were super aggressive. They cast it over you. They were casting up front all the time. And amongst the pros, there was five guys. It's like, when it, it, back then they used to call out your names at the partner pairing. And it's like, if somebody got drawed with one of those guys, everybody would look at each other and go and you know start laughing or something it's like because they knew what was up so anyway i drew this dude out and i sort of got some of the looks from some of my buddies but i gave him the benefit of the doubt i'd never met this dude before and um, we get in the boat that morning and i can tell he was real nervous and fidgety and uh you know one of those guys that was just wired a little bit too tight had a bunch of rods in the boat, tackle and all that type of stuff. And he was asking me what we were going to do and what the plan was for today right off the bat. And, you know, I don't want to talk about that because I don't have a plan. I, I try to let the day unfold. So I don't have this structured plan on what we're going to do. But right off the bat, he's given me this third degree about what we're going to do. And it's really none of his business. I mean, guys, in my opinion, 
the co-angler system is there to learn. It's like, if you're going to get the maximum amount out of a co-angler, you should approach that as not you're competing in the tournament, but you're there, you're going to class and you're going to learn. You're going to, you're going to come away from that tournament with so much, you know, more, a better experience. But this guy, you know, he started probing me right off the bat. So it immediately, it got the energy funky a little bit. Cause I, I just, it was early in the morning. I didn't want to hear it. I just wanted to meditate to myself and start focusing and really getting to get into my game frame of mind. So anyway, we get to my first spot there and I start fishing down there and I'm picking apart. I'm, I'm pitching and flipping down this bank here. And I'm, I'm just pitching and flipping cover along the bank and isolated, you know, trees and, you know, rocks and that type of stuff. And right off the bat, I start catching them. And I can, we had back then, and I told him before we went out, it's like, man, if you need the net, just holler and I'll get it for you. And, you know, same. So no problem there. But anyway, I start catching, you know, a few fish and he's super quiet. And after about, I think the third fish I put in the boat, which is, was, I, we'd only been fishing like 20 or 30 minutes. He made a comment. It's like, are we going to be doing this very long? How, how long are we going to be fishing like this? And I look back at him and it's like, I'm, well, as long as they're biting, that's, I said, you know, I didn't really think much about it. He goes, you know, but, and I could tell he was getting a little antsy about that. I thought it was sort of strange that he would ask me that, especially with the tone that he had. So about the next 10 minutes, I filled out my limit, you know, so I got a limb at the boat and he hadn't had a bite. And when I put that fifth fish in the boat, he goes, he goes, he goes, this, this, this is not working. He goes, I can't catch anything doing this like that. This is like, this is what, what are we doing here? It's like, th there's a lot of other stuff we could do being better. And I said, dude, I just caught a limb of the fish in, in 30 minutes out here. There's plenty of fish in here. I'm still trying to be nice at this point. I said, there's plenty of fish in here. I said, I got some, you, you're welcome to the baits I've got right here. I said, you know, just pick it apart. You'll get your bites. And he sort of grumbled about something and we kept fishing. I caught a couple more cold out and he goes, he goes, he goes, I'm getting screwed here. He said, I can't even fish. He said, there's nowhere for me to fish out here. And I said, what are you talking about? Cause I, I had the boat like at a 45 degree angle, just pitching to the bank like that. And I said, you've got all the water. I said, I'm fishing my water right here. You've got all your water that you can pitch and flip to. You can throw behind the bank, parallel to the bank. You can throw out in the middle. I, I go, dude, you literally have 20 different options of where you can fish here. You can throw a crankbait, you can throw a top water, you can throw a jig, you can throw a crankbait, whatever like that. He was just mad that he couldn't catch them. So anyway, you know, I stayed on that bank for maybe another 45 minutes and he was just, I could tell he was just getting irritated and I'm already irritated because we're, we're into the day, like, <clears throat> excuse me, we're into the day, like an hour and a half. And he's already got me in a bad mood. I mean, even though I got a limit of fish in the boat, it's a small limit. I get a limit of fish in the boat, but he's like, he's, he's, he's creating a negative energy with his attitude in the boat. I've never had anybody that, 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 that was that blatant right off the bat in it. So I'm already starting to get a little bit irritated with this goober. So I decided to pick up and I wanted to make another move and I pull around, went down the lake about a half a mile and I started, you know, flipping some of these uh, flooded, it, the lake was a little bit high at the time and I was flipping a jig and some of these flat flooded mats and I hook a big one, like a six pounder. And I go, get the net. I said, this is a big one like that. And I'm fighting it. And it's got me hung up in the, in the, in the, uh, cover, you know, the logs and stuff like that. I said, I need the net on this. And he just was back there. Like it wasn't even moving. I finally get the fish out of the thing there and he's still on the back deck. And I just reached down and lift the fish in. It was about like a six and a half pounder. It was a big bass for the day like that. And, um, I go, and I, I got the fish in the boat sort of looked at him and it's like, you know, I said, you know, are you going to get the net for me? When I watched it, you can see this was a giant fish here. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I was just getting ready to, I was just reeling in. And I said, I said, if a fish like that, I said, can you just put your rod down and grab the net? I said, if you lose, if your rod falls in the water, I'll give you one of mine or I'll buy or replace it like that. So I, he could tell he, he didn't want to get the net because he was already mad and he saw me with this giant fish and he just didn't want to help out. So he's still not catching anything and we're flipping and pitching down through there and uh, not catching much. So we decided to make a run down the lake. 
and we, we're you know and we're stopping hitting some isolated places like this and he's gotten quiet at this point he still hasn't caught any fish and you know i've got a pretty good limit in the boat i got a six pounder and a limit <coughs> and um <coughs> so this is like halfway through the day and he's he i could tell that he's like he's mumbling to himself like he's just like he's just pissed he's like he's just mad at the world and we run to this next spot and i'm going like 40 miles an hour because i'm going out of one cove into the next and he goes he goes you know i don't have to sign your weigh-in your weigh-in slip don't you he goes if, you, if you're going to keep screwing me he goes i i don't have to sign your weigh-in slip and you're not even going to weigh those fish in that just i had had enough at that point i shut i backed the throttle off i shut down in the middle of the lake and I go, what the F is your problem? I said, you have had every opportunity to catch fish here. I said, I have put you in position where have you, you have not been limited to where you can cast. I said, any other person I fish with, we'd have done the same thing. I've offered you the bait. It's not my fault if you're not getting the, the, the uh, strikes with this. I said, if you got a problem, let's call the tournament director right now and we'll settle this right now. Other than that, you need to keep your effing mouth shut like that. I was pissed at this guy. And he was like, and at this point, I don't even know if he's going to sign my weigh-in slip. You know, because we had a couple more hours to fish. He wound up catching two small keepers that day. And we got up to the tournament there, to the weigh-in. And at this point, I don't know what's going to happen. Because, you know, back then, your co-angler had to sign your weigh-in slip or it didn't count. But he went ahead signed my weigh-in slip, never said a word to me like that. And, uh, you know, it was just a terrible day, man. If I had not have caught that six pounder, it had just been a nightmare. But anyway, that was the biggest a-hole that I've ever had. And it probably would have been worse. I had, you know, because if you've ever fit, if anyone you guys have ever fished with me, I'm, I'm pretty easy to fit, to get along with and fish in a tournament. You know, I'll do anything I can to help my co-angler out as long as they're fishing their water if they try to infringe on my water and try to get me fishing too fast or casting up in front of the boat yeah i'm not going to help them but if, if they're fishing their deal and they're staying out of my way i'll do whatever i can you know to help these guys out but this guy was just his own worst enemy and he definitely lived up to his reputation um as a being an a-hole. I remember one of my buddies, one of my close friends, drew him out like three tournaments later and almost got into a physical confrontation with this guy. But my buddy is like, he was a big guy, so he, this other dude stood down pretty quick. But anyway, it was the same deal. He got he, he got almost to the point of a physical confrontation with guys. There's no reason for that at all. I mean, but anyway, I just wanted to share that story with you. That's the, out of all the co-anglers, that was the biggest a-hole I've ever fished with. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll talk later.